Hey everyone, just wanted to talk quickly about some subglottic hemangiomas. Happen to see an interesting patient in clinic. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm Romain Johnson. I'm a pediatric otolaryngologist, practice in Dallas. And you know, subglottic hemangiomas, just briefly, are soft tissue tumors that grow in the airway. They follow a pattern of growth that mimics hemangiomas in other locations. So if you have one on the skin, the scalp, et cetera, they tend to go through three phases where they proliferate, they get larger, then they tend to stabilize, and then they tend to resolve. And these tend to occur over about six to 12 months. Usually, maybe they'll start about four to five months of age. You'll get into that proliferative phase, you know, stabilize about 12 months of age, maybe a little bit longer, and then typically resolves between like two years old, maybe a little bit older. And the problem with subclotic hemangioma is that the proliferative phase causes airway obstruction and it can be lethal because it completely occludes the airway. And so these potentially are lethal conditions. In the past, uh, that was problematic. Anyway, here's a video of a kid I saw came in, recurrent croup, recalcitrant croup, steroids, racemic epi, in and out of the emergency room. They show up in clinic stable but has a lot of strider and no one's really sure what's going on so when I hear that history immediately I think this child needs to go to the operating room anyway I took the kid to the operating room for a formal bronchoscopy and then we could clearly see the subglottic hemangioma including you know basically 90 percent of the airway uh, but once we had the diagnosis was pretty sure what we needed to do next um, in the past what you would do is um, you know, you would either openly resect it, so you would do a neck incision, and then you would make an incision to open the trachea, and then you would remove the subglottic hemangioma, then you would suture the trachea closed. Sometimes you would have to use a rib graft in order to make the trachea bigger because a lot of those patients had a component of what we call subglottic stenosis. Some people would just do a tracheostomy, leave the tracheostomy in for a period of time, until they get to the resolution phase, and then you could take the tracheostomy tube out. Or you could try a laser, a CO2 laser, to resect part of the hemangioma. You can inject it with steroids to try to make it go away. And you had a variety of approaches. They all involve a certain amount of morbidity. Um, not all the time it worked, so it was a dilemma. Anyway, that all changed when we discovered that propanolol which is a drug that treats blood pressure, can be used to treat infantile hemangiomas. And so they did a randomized controlled trial, and it showed definitively that this drug effectively treats hemangiomas. And you can see here in the analysis that, you know, uh, three milligrams, six months, they, three milligrams per kilogram per day, sorry, six months, they were completely better, most of the patients. And then at 24 week analysis, you know, again, almost 60%, the symptoms were completely resolved. And so this revolutionized treatment of hemangiomas. Now, pretty much all kids who get hemangiomas in the airway are treated with propranolol. And obviously, they use it for other places too, but our primary concern is the airway. So this was a patient who had a subglottic hemangioma blocking the airway 90%, maybe 80%. And then after treatment of a propranolol, law, about a three month later visit, airway was basically 70% open. Uh, eventually was weaned off the medication and was done fine. So take homes, subglottic hemangiomas usually present as recurrent or recalcitrant croup in infants, typically less than six months old. Often they have hemangioma on the skin, other places. And then treatment with propranolol law is now standard of care with surgery safe for medical failure. Anyway, hope that helps. Have a great day.